Okay, so um, I originally planned for my next video to be the uh, pod racer I'm building for my nephew, but um, I had a little change of plans on how I wanted to build that, and I still wanted to post a video. And I've got another project I'm working on that's probably going to use some of these little techniques I'm about to show you, but um, I thought this would be as good a time of, as any um, to show uh, what you can do with some of these. Um, not necessarily this brand, uh, but uh, aluminum cans. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure most of everyone who's watching this is familiar with an aluminum can or aluminium, depending on where you're from, or aluminio. Um, anyway, um, I usually start by gouging it open with uh, some Sharpie scissors that, uh, there we go, um, you don't want to run with. And just cut the puppy open. Making sure to leave lots of razor-like shards to slice your fingers open with. Get rid of those later. Um, I mean, this stuff's so thin, pretty much any pair of scissors will cut through it. It doesn't have to be anything special. The trick here is to uh, not slice your fingers open when you're doing it. So, I might have mentioned a few things you can do with these um, in some chats a while back. Uh, I've done some pretty crazy stuff with aluminum in the past, uh, including making a... Uh, and looking back on it, I'm still not entirely sure how I did it, <laughs> but I made a, a muscle cuirass. Um, out of aluminum many 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 years ago that took forever but you know um, it is possible uh, I don't recommend it for those of you who are impatient like I am because I am pretty impatient but uh, get rid of the sharp stuff that cuts you open but uh, yeah there's other things you can do with this stuff so I originally saved these cans for um, the uh, Robot Geisha I'm working on, but after a recent trip to uh, Walmart, which I gotta show you guys that stuff too. I'll show you tomorrow in the live meeting, uh, live stream. Um, I uh, decided, you know, and it wasn't just at that point I decided, but. I, I'd, I'd been thinking about how I wanted to do the clothes for that robot, and uh, I thought fabric is just a really cool way to go if I could find a good design. Um, <clears throat> I've even considered paper, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really, I haven't really decided on that one. So. I guess the first thing we can start with is uh, some stuff you can do with uh, aluminum. So one thing is, which is kind of easy, is if you got a little piece of wood, something soft, like a softer wood would probably be good, but um, you can obviously uh, cut it pretty easily and uh, fold it and make it into some nice looking little panels and things. Um, I might be using this technique for another project, which is this big lotion bottle. Um, I, you know, I wanted to, I've been wanting to make this like four legged walker, you know, like a big four legged walker, um, out of something tall like this, uh, seeing some other builds I kind of liked, but 
I thought it'd be a really cool um, platform. Like, you know, I thought maybe for like a hunting stand or, you know, some kind of mobile observation post. And when I got a look at this shape, um, I started thinking Airstream. I saw I saw a video about an Airstream and I just saw this and I thought something about this just really makes me think Airstream and those have lots of aluminum and little rivets and things and I thought well that you know that might be kind of cool so that's the plan for this is a big walker four-legged walker I'm pretty sure four legs six legs probably four and maybe at a 172nd or 1 100 scale, 164th, I, I don't know, I haven't decided yet, small. So this would be the engine room, this would be like a living area, this would be like another living area, and then there'd be a little, I don't know, some kind of wooden pl platform on top with a little hatch and uh, some railing. And that would be like the observation area. And then maybe on the other side, a little door with a balcony and some other details. But yeah, and then it would be like, so I guess the idea is like if you were in a, boy, I'm really getting sidetracked on this. This is supposed to be just an aluminum video. But I just anyway, that's my plan. Um, I'll talk more about that some other time. But uh, yeah, part of the reason I'm mentioning this is because the way I'm going to put these panels on is... Uh, you know these are really flexible you can they're really good for getting around curves and uh, you can glue them in place and get them if you're you know heating them up or move you know um, putting a little pressure on them you can get them to conform to the shape you want pretty easily uh, and what's more you can get a little stylus like this maybe not quite that big but um, find yourself a stylus that's in the size you want maybe like that and uh, put it on the other side. I would recommend for something that's very detailed. Um, let's cut a little piece off of here. I'm going to do some other things here. Wait a second. Uh, you can sometimes sand this uh, finish off. Uh, and sanding kind of makes it a little more malleable. Um, not quite as stiff. Uh, Aluminum is one of those soft metals that if you, you put a little... Uh, heat and friction on it you can get it kind of really workable um, without ruining it um, yeah so let's say I'm gonna put some rivets in some rows here uh, I could get my little stylus and let's just use this as a guide and just kind of put some Maybe every quarter of an inch. And you can get pretty accurate with this, obviously. Or you can just kind of wing it. So, voila. You end up with this. Perfect little rivets. It's good for aircraft, too, I've noticed. Um, but, yeah. There, there's my riveted panel. Cool, right? Uh, other things you can do is, uh, again, with maybe some popsicle sticks, which is always a good, good way to go. Yeah, here we go. Of course, there's one right over here where I didn't need it. So besides rivets uh, on panels, and like I said, depending on what you use, you can kind of go big or small with these. I mean, I don't think this was going to make too much of a difference. I'm not putting enough pressure to maybe make these any bigger than the other ones. But, yeah, a little bit bigger. So, you can see these are slightly larger than those. Um, and then if you really want to go crazy, this would probably put a hole in it. This is a, an awl, but it's an automatic awl with a punch in it. But, uh... You can go pretty dented. It looks like it, yeah, that went all the way through. Um, might be a cool way to make a bullet hole if you wanted to put bullet holes in something. Or on the opposite side, however you want to do it. 
So, yeah, lots of cool stuff you can do with that. But uh, the other thing you can do is, again, if you take a couple of uh, popsicle sticks or something similar, um, you can do this with other things too. It doesn't have to be popsicle sticks. And there's other ways that I wish I had a, a better tool to show you. Um, in fact, there's a, um, a kind of, it's almost like a little mini pasta roller about this big, like about the size of two fingers, but, uh, the rollers have uh, corrugated edges and what they're made for actually is if you go to an art store, you can find sometimes that, uh, and when you're painting with these types of tube paints, uh, a lot of times, especially with the expensive oils, um, you want to make sure you get as much paint out of it as possible. You're, I mean, when you're spending 30, 40, or even $50 for a tube of oil that is, and I'm not joking, even as, as small as a third of the size of this one, you want to make sure you're getting your money's worth. So you want to squeeze every last little ounce of paint out of that. And what they have are these kind of rollers that you kind of push in. And you have a little knob, and you, and you, as you're twisting it, it winds through and it squeezes all the paint out. And what they are is they've got these two little corrugated teeth uh, rollers that pretty much crunch all the paint out. Um, for me, for my part, I used to just cut off the end, pop it open, and scoop it out. But, uh, yeah, they sell those things, or at least they used to. I'm sure you could probably find one somewhere. But what I found they were useful for was making your own corrugated paper or in this case corrugated aluminum um, so I would use it for projects where I needed like something corrugated and I would take that roller and put the paper or the aluminum through in this case and twist it through and you'd end up with something corrugated the alternative to that is something like this so what I'm basically doing is just I'm creating a gap where I can put some pressure in between these two pieces and uh effectively just put some pressure on it and then you just kind of flip it over and you go in the opposite direction you would line that up there let's see if this works put that there about the same gap this is like the really hard way to do it the roller is so much easier but yeah, you can put a, a nice angle on it or an edge. I mean, this stuff's so thin, you can almost fold it pretty well. And if you're worried about these edges, if you're careful and you've got a, something that you can use as a, a way to flatten it, you can kind of do this. Put a little bend in it. And once you've got that bend in there, it'll usually follow the the bend. And you get a nice smooth non ouchy edge on it so that's another thing you can do um i also mentioned in one of the videos not videos but uh, one of the uh streaming uh vids on another channel um that there's other things you can do a lot of people pay for these photo etched um uh, <clears throat> uh, plants um, if you're looking for some leaves that are really thin, but, uh, a lot more durable than paper, aluminum is the way to go. Um, it's a little more difficult, requires a lot more patience, but the way I would do it is, um, you cut at an angle, right? And then you, uh, you do this. Let me see if I remember how to do this. Oh, it would be uh, slice, slice, slice. So one, two, three. I think I've probably cut that too much, but um, probably thinner. Let's go thinner. That's good. And I would just cut these little diamonds out. And then you would take these and put little creases in them um, or bend them in the shape you want. 
and make little tiny leaves out of them. Um, in this case, you probably want to uh, put a little crease in it, mm. which is easier said than done, but you could do, a, do it with a razor, I guess. I'm working with a lot of sharp objects, so if you're a kid, don't do this at home without your parents. But, like I said, aluminum takes um, impression pretty well. At least this stuff does. Pretty well. And if you're careful, like I said, and uh, patient enough, you can do some kind of neat things with it. Not sure if you can see that. But, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's something. It's not perfect, but whatever. Um, and if you're good with scissors, if you're good at cutting stuff out with paper and scissors, you can, you can also do that. Um, last thing I was going to show you was uh, rivets. Um, and there's a way, there's lots of ways to do it, actually. But there is a way to do it with aluminum. I don't know. If, should work with this. It's pretty thin. Um... Probably helps to put it on wood. Uh, probably an eraser would be better. I think I got an eraser here somewhere. Uh, might work with cork. We can try cork. This is a pretty strong cork. Basically, you just need something that's about as dense or as soft as an eraser or maybe this cork. And you take something like this. And I want to say... Um, if I have, well, here's what irritates me. I've got this nice little pin vise, um, but I don't know where all my, I don't know where all my drill bits are. So let me, let me find something real quick and we can, we can try it with this. This is probably the smallest drill bit I have right now that might, that might fit in here. All right. So this might work. So the reason I want to use this little drill bit is because, uh, Might not stay in there. Well, is it? Ah, this might work. Well, let's see if it does, if it works. Yeah, looks like it's gonna work. So what you see I did there, the reason I, you want to use a, the end, you don't know when I say drill bit, you're not using the drill part, you're using the flat part of the drill bit and you notice when I punched it it made a super nice clean hole right through well um, that my friends is this is probably why I wanted to use something a little denser that made this And that is a, uh, oops, did I lose it? There it is. That is a little teeny tiny rivet. So, yeah, you'll probably have to stick with the cork, but basically you, you take your soft stuff and that gives it enough pressure to and it gives you a bunch of rivets, which on this I suppose I'll have to dig out now. But uh, yeah, so anyway, that's another little trick you can do with this stuff. Um, it, it's really a versatile material. It, you know, I think some people are scared of it. I mean, I'm not cutting myself. I haven't folded this. It's just a matter of you just got to be careful of these little sharp edges here. Um, I was going to use this as clothes. Um, for the uh, geisha, I might yet still use it for other things. Um, another thing I was thinking of using it for was my OMC bot for the body panels. But um, this stuff has an awesome memory. So you really kind of have to, to work it to get it to conform to what you want to do. And you have to be kind of gentle with it. Um, Last thing I guess is, you know, if you want to get kind of, and I've, I've done this before, but 
if you want a shape like a um, an aircraft, this I mean, like again, this is kind of really great for aircraft. Um, well, last thing I'll show you, then I'll cut the video. But one of the cool things you can do too, if you're careful, is uh, make little bits for aircraft uh, or other vehicles, anything that you want kind of a specific shape for. If you're careful, you can do this. Um, it just takes a little bit of finesse and kind of playing around with the material a little bit. Like I said, it helps if you have something soft underneath, but Depends on what you want to do, and it's it is thin, so you do have to still be careful of. You know, you don't want to push it too hard, or you'll break through the, the tension of the, the metal. But if you're careful and patient, I'm being kind of impatient with it, but just to prove my point. Let's see if I can smooth that out with this larger ball. I might have busted through the metal. Um, you can get things to kind of come out and uh, let me see here. Try a better piece. I'll be a little more gentle with it this time. Let's try a circle. Yeah. So, yeah, you can do stuff like that. And I know what you're thinking. Well, what does it get good for? Well, you know, just to add little details. So, like I was showing you with the rivets and earlier with the uh, other little impressions. If you're careful... You can make something like that. Then, obviously, if you spend a little more time with it, you can get it a little more accurate. But it's not hard to do. And it doesn't require any kind of real special tools. And the, I think the result is, you know, kind of fun. There you go. Little metal patch panel. Maybe you could use it for armor, uh, org vehicle. If you get a, get a little more accurate with it, you could use it for some uh, raised area on a an airplane or vehicle. You know, something that needs a riveted panel just for some added detail what we were talking about with this so anyway yeah that's just uh just a few of the things you can do with these aluminum cans there's really a lot more but i just wanted to show you guys just another quickie modeled or trick with uh after average everyday object um so yeah have fun with that like and subscribe. Bye.